through how I've set up my SDR, my software defined radio, so that I can receive aircraft ADSB telemetry messages. These are messages sent by all commercial aircraft as they fly through the air and can be received by any station within range of the broadcast. I can get many, many miles out of this, uh, out of this station and I've been pretty happy with the results. You need a couple things to make this work properly. First off, you need to have an SDR. I'm using the new Alec, let's try that the other way. I'm using the new Alec SDR and this is the any SDR Mini 2 model. Uh, I've got another video that talks about how to actually get this set up and running and how to use SDR Sharp with it. We're not going to use SDR Sharp today, but if you haven't got yours up and running yet, you should definitely go through a video similar to that so you know the process of how to get it working. Uh, there's a couple things we're going to have to do in this video that are similar to what are already done in that video. The second thing you're going to need is a decent antenna. The 1090 megahertz is a fairly high frequency and these are pretty small antenna. The little antenna that comes with the with the SDR is really not good for much of anything. So you're going to need to spend a little bit of time building yourself an antenna to pick up the, these signals. Let me show you the antenna I'm using. This is a homebrew antenna that I built myself. This is a piece of wood with a couple small pieces of copper wire. And the entire dimension of this from here to here is 137 millimeters. You need to do this, you really do need to do this in millimeters in, in metric system because this is, these are fairly tight tolerances and if you try to convert this over to inches and, and cut these wires, you're probably going to be off by a significant amount and that's not the best thing. Now, this is just a kind of a temporary setup. I've got the wires pushed through this block of wood with some alligator clips on the back. So the wires just stick through the block of wood. There's some holes drilled in it. You can see what the center point is there. There's some holes drilled through the block of wood. And then I've just got some alligator clips. Oh, focus. There we go. Clipped on to the antenna itself. And then those alligator clips are soldered through a piece of wire to an SO239 connector, which is screwed to a piece of coax that then leads over to my SDR, which has a, you know, SO239 coax adapter. So now we've got to move over to the computer. Okay, and now on over to the computer. We have to download a couple of applications in order to get this to work. Uh, the first thing we need to download is the RTL 1090 application. And I will put links to both of these applications and downloads down in the description of the video. So when you first get to this web page, there's all this stuff here. And we're going to scroll down past all this and come down to the software and download links. And we're going to grab this RTL 1090 IMU, Installer Maintenance Utility by clicking this link here, this button. And I'm not gonna download this, I already have it downloaded uh, for the sake of making this video go a little faster. We're not gonna wait for the download times, um, but just go ahead and click on that link and download it. And then you're also gonna wanna grab this RTL 1090 scope, where it says latest version, and get this download button there. Then you're gonna go on over to the virtual radar server, and uh, we'll click on this download at the top of the page, and then click on the download Windows installer button. Now. Once those download, um, you're going to get them in your downloads folder, and I've already moved them to this temp folder. So the first thing we're going to install is the RTL 1090 IMU. We do that by double clicking on the file. And it brings up this window here. So now we click on new install. And it's going to come up and ask what version of the software of the OS we're running. We're running Windows 10, so we're going to choose Vista 7 and 8 because there is no option for Windows 10. Click confirm version. Now it's going to ask where to install it. So I'm going to install it in my documents folder. I have an SDR stuff folder. And then the temp folder is where I'm working. I'm going to right click on that, click new. And I'm going to create a folder called RTL 1090. Say OK. And then I'm going to select it. If you don't select it, it won't show up here and it won't install that folder. So make sure you do that. And then click OK. Now it's going to download a few things. And while we're waiting for this, what, what it's doing is downloading a few drivers and downloading some of the application. And then it's going to download Zadig, which is the um, program. If you saw my video about how to set up the SDR in the first place and how to get that working with SDR Sharp, it's, uh, it's a program that installs the Windows driver. So if you haven't done this yet, uh, I strongly suggest you watch a video about how to get the SDR working with um, with SDR Sharp, and it'll, it'll go through this process. So now 
we got to come back over here and it says, please insert your USB dongle. I've already done that. Cancel ignore all messages installing driver. Uh, it's okay, the driver's already set. Are you ready now? We're going to click yes. It's going to say you should have a Zadig application. Follow the steps. Are you ready now? Yes. So it's going to say list all devices. And we did this before, but you basically click on here to say list all devices. Click on this options. Say list all devices. And then in my case, it's, it's the RTL uh, 2838 UHIDR, IDIR, uh, is the right, the right driver. So click yes. Um, they're saying this bulk in. So either one of these is okay. It also says that it may, it may work here. So either one is okay. Click on that and say yes. Now, since I've already installed the driver, I don't need to reinstall the driver. The only real thing we have to do is verify that we have the right uh, ID here. So we've got this matches 0BDA2838, 0BDA2838. And I don't have this extra field, so I'm not really sure what to do with that, but it worked for me. So I just click yes. I don't need to reinstall the driver because um, it's already done. So I'm just going to click yes and say, okay, you may close Zadig now. So we're going to close that down. Okay. We will launch your RTL installation. You're ready and done. Please click the recent notes to terms of use. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so this opened up on the other on my other screen, so I'm gonna bring it over here. So I think we're done here. We can close this. So now we've got this screen, and it's saying, you know, 1090 megahertz, and there's a, a couple of buttons here. Not a whole lot of excitement going on. We're just gonna click start. So it's gonna do a few things, and it should get going here in a minute, and then say it's started. Now, if you click on table down here at the bottom, you see we're getting something coming in. Table here, you're actually gonna see some some flight information. So these are planes in the air that are actually being tracked by our system now. And this is all fine and, and happy and everything, but this is not really what we're after. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop this and, clo and close that window out. So that window closes out. Now, if we take and double click on this beta three, this update, we're gonna take all these and do a copy. And we're gonna go back and go to the RTL 1090 folder and do a paste. And we're gonna replace the files and that's gonna do the update. So now we're running the newest version. And if you run this now, you'll see there's a little bit different, as soon as I bring it over to the right screen, there's now this scope. So if I hit start and I start getting, I start getting some flights in here. If I click on this scope, I now have a map and I'm over in the US so I can zoom out. This starts over in Germany. I can zoom out and I can move myself all the way over kind of slowly but surely to the to the Detroit area here and I can zoom in and I can actually see you know a flight being tracked but this really isn't a terribly uh, user-friendly interface so something better we can do we're gonna click on this table and just so we see the table results there I kind of move this off to the side here now we're going to install this other application the virtual radar so double click on the setup and now I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it's saying that it's Windows protecting my PC. Oh, thank you, Windows. If I click more info, uh, virtual radar from an unknown publisher. Thank you, Windows. And if I click run anyway, it'll go ahead and run the install. All right. So we'll click next. I accept the terms. Click next a few more times. Install program files, uh, port 80. So this, what this does is it creates a web server. We'll go ahead and hit next here. Um, I don't care about other computers. So I am not going to do this. If you cared about other computers attaching to this to see it, you would want to want to click that. But what this does is it creates a web server on port 80, and then you use a web browser to actually see the results. So we're going to go ahead and do all that. It's going to install, and then we're going to say finish. So now if we come down here and say radar, we'll find virtual radar. We run that. It's going to pop up. And look at that. It already, it already connected. Um, so this may be because I had already gotten this working once, but if, if this doesn't connect automatically like it did here uh, to the receiver, go to tools and go to options and go to receiver and then run this wizard. This is a little wizard button up there. Click on that wizard. Now you want to say yeah, I have a software defined radio and I'm going to select my model as the, uh, the decoder software I'm using is the RTL 1090 and I'm going to hit next. And is it run, running on this computer? I say yes. And then you finish and then you say okay. So now it should be connected and you can see it's getting messages and the aircraft tracked is, not, is five. Now, if you look over here on the RTL 1090, you'll also see this green TCP popped up, meaning that 
the virtual radar server has connected to the RTL 1090 and is actually pulling the information and getting these, these, uh, this information and flight tracking uh, messages coming over. So now, if we click on this link right here, it's going to open up our web browser and you can actually see a GUI interface. And this is a much nicer interface than the RTL 1090. You can actually see planes with direction and there's there's uh, all kinds of information here about this. There's call signs and routes and altitude. And if you, you select the select the flight here, you can actually get the, the track that it's flown since it started tracking. And, and you can see information over here about the uh, what type of flight it is. It's a Canadian flight from Canjet. It's a Boeing 737. It's, it's descending at 64 feet per minute. Um, its speed is 424 knots. It's heading. It's distance from us. You know, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, now, when you first start this up, I think it's going to start you off over in England. And let me show you how to how to move to where you're actually at. You're going to click Menu and go to Options, and then you're going to go to um, I'm sorry, you're going to click on Set Current Location, and you're going to close that. And then this this box, this little pointer pops up. And you grab that pointer, you drag it to wherever you're at. So if I'm here. I'm going to drag it there. So that's now my current location. But I'm not there. I am about there. So that's where I'm going to leave my current location. And then I'm going to go back to Options and uncheck Set Current Location. And that's what that little blue dot means. That's where you're, you're actually located. Now, as you um, use this application, planes are going to come and go, and they're going to pop up and disappear all on their own. And there's not really much else you need to do. And this is, this is the application. I certainly hope that uh, you found this... Uh, interesting and informative and if you have any comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section below uh, thank you and goodbye